Hello everybody and welcome back to WAUK. So in today's video we're going to be taking a closer look at this. The build, the equipment I've used, what I carry and the thought process behind it all. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for the rest of the video. So a great place to start this video will be exterior. Now exterior and styling is all down to personal preference. There is no right or wrong colour, there is no right or wrong tyre. There's A, budget, and B, what you personally like. I like this colour, I like these tyres, so that's what I've gone with. In fact, when I upgrade the tyres or when I change the tyres, I'll probably go through to all terrains because 90% of this vehicle's use is on the road and these are heavy mud off-road tyres at the moment and the only time I use it off-road is when I'm coming into the woods or when I'm doing a bit of shooting. So, to be fair, they're a bit wasted on me. But that's my whole thought process on the exterior of the vehicle. So we've moved around to the driver's side now and on the driver's side is usually quite plain. Apart from the ladder that gains access to the roof rack and the awning tie-down point, it's usually quite plain. But what you will see today is the solar panel. With the sun being behind the camera, I've put the solar panel on this side of the vehicle, which is one of the beauties of these foldable solar panels. You can move them about to wherever the sun's coming from. And to be fair, that little solar panel, I think is 100 watt foldable, obviously, and it's kept my leisure battery that's powering my diesel heater powered up great for the last five days. Uh, moving down to the bottom of the vehicle, I have got some diesel. I brought far too much. Uh, I did a bit of maths while I was at home and my maths was well out. I, I decided I needed about 25, 30 litres. And in fact, I've only used probably about seven litres so far. And as I say, I'm five days into my camp. So for this quick section of the video, I'm just showing you a few storage solutions. As I've been out for a week, I put all my fresh produce and tin food underneath the vehicle as I'm not powering my fridge at the moment stored that just under the vehicle and they're keeping fresh and they're keeping cool. Uh, I, I did bring quite a few bottles of water with me and some friends brought me some extra water because I completely under, under budgeted. The grey box you're seeing just over there is always in the Land Rover and it carries towels like kitchen towels, washing up liquid, some uh, wipes, baby wipes, uh, bin bags and all things to do with cleaning. Usually the stuff you'd keep under your fridge, in, uh, under your fridge, sorry, under your sink in the house. Moving along quickly to these two toolboxes. Now these two toolboxes don't usually come with me. The only reason they're with me is, is, is I wanted to experiment with sides on the awning. So I've got a few, uh, shall we say, cheaper tarps that I was going to experiment putting sides on the awning. So they're the only reason they're here. I haven't actually done that yet and I'm probably not going to do that because the weather's not needed them to be fair. So this ammo box is being used as a, uh, a step to get into the back of the vehicle at the moment. But when not in use, it houses my oil lanterns that are just there, that I use an awful lot. I absolutely love them. I've got one just here and one just over there, you'll see in the distance. And uh, yeah, I use them an awful lot and it houses the fuel that lights them and also houses the lamps and keeps them safe. Right, let's move on to the interior. I'm going to keep my feet just on the mat here, which keeps all the mud off the carpet. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about the interior. So the bed that I'm sat on actually has a couple of different configurations. It can come out slightly wider. So in the summer, I'll usually have it wider because I don't need the heater on. And if I just move along to this little camera, I can show you exactly why. So one of the heater ducts for the diesel heater comes up through the floor, which is in front of the fridge. And if I deploy the bed fully, I restrict the heat coming up through the floor. There are a few other ducts dotted around the car, which I'll show you shortly. But the controls for the diesel heater, obviously there's my pillows, I sleep at that end. And the control for the diesel heater just pops up there so I can control it. 
Uh, since the last time you saw the vehicle, I have moved my fridge sideways round. And that's to gain access for when I'm making myself a brew or cooking or doing whatever I want to do in the morning on the counter. Again, I have changed this a little bit because last time you saw it, there will have been a shelving unit just there that I could gain access from outside when I was using the gullwing. Um, these drawers are all now fixed in place, they can't move. This one is a drawer and I keep all essentials in there. So like tea, coffee, uh, a little tiny burner over there in the corner and usually my kettle and another pan and usually my cups will be in there too. At the moment they're not in there because I'm using them. In these cupboards just underneath, they're all bolted in again and secure. I've got other things like spare burners, uh, spare tea and coffee. And uh, this one is just a pea bottle and some stuff I rarely, rarely use. Uh, cookser, candles, uh, spare gas and other items. On top, there's a nice little slither of space that I can just fit in some plates, spare hot water bottle and spare water carrying vessels, let's call them. Down the side, I usually have a dustpan and brush, which is a little tiny thing that looks something like this. Can't remember where I bought that from, but it's a great little thing. Try and get it in the light for you to see. And my first aid kit, which is always near the back door, always has been on every vehicle build. The shameless plug, my water to go bottle, so I can filter rainwater and such while I'm out in the wild, just in case I do run out of water. And that's my usual sleeping bag. That's the one I usually use when I'm, when I'm staying in the vehicle. But at the moment, my other sleeping bag is over there hung up, just airing. Now on the back of the door, I'll shut the door just so you can see it. It's going to get very dark for a few seconds, so I will turn on some lighting. Is my camp cover. Now in the camp cover, I have mainly personal hygiene stuff, with a few exceptions. In here it's toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, face towel, comb, uh, baby wipes for baby wipe washes, bum wipes and toilet paper just because I'm staying out in the, in the woods so long, obviously you need to keep clean. Uh, the bottom one is just odds and sods, some spare big wiring and other bits and bobs. And in the top one, just here on the left, is, is uh, USBs and uh, maybe a few spare lights and things. Let's open the door again just to get a bit more light in here. I have got thermal curtains on the back of the vehicle and on the side I sleep, which is just here, as you can see. So all the lighting I've used in this vehicle is battery operated, i.e. I charge it off USB. I never wanted it to be um, a situation where I, I, I have like a mains in the car, if you know what I mean, a 12 volt mains. So everything is either these little pucks that you can turn on and off via remote control and it has various di di different temperatures and different brightnesses. Or I have uh, little lanterns like this one behind me. Uh, this, this works fantastic. I can't remember where I bought it. It was either eBay or YouTube, but it's just touch sensitive. And if you press and hold it, it gets brighter. And if you press and hold it again, it gets duller and then it's one touch and it goes off. But these are fantastic and this will do a week on a full charge. And then you just plug it into your USB when you're traveling home or if you've got a power bank just to recharge it. I have got a few little emergency lights like these little square ones. They're about six quid on Amazon. Absolutely perfect for finding your way around if you hear a noise at night and you need a, a good directional light. These put out a lot of light, but they haven't got a fantastic battery life as these have. And they just hang up here. Right, let me jump out and I'll show you my garage area and I'll show you some other storage solutions that I've managed to, uh, to work out. So the drawer underneath the, the main cab is where I keep all my tools. Uh, towing straps, stuff for winching, socket sets, axes, uh, everything to do with tooling. But it has got a little bit of a hidden secret. So if I just open this up, this was a lengthy discussion with a friend of mine one night. We were on the phone for about two hours and I was deciding how to better utilise this. So uh, we put in a few battens, screwed into the side and we made a worktop. So at any given time, if I just want to park up in a lay-by, if I've hit traffic and I want to make myself a brew on the back of the car and the interior is fully loaded so I can't get to my counter, it's another option for just pulling your kettle out your drawer, pulling your gas that's also stored in there and your tea and coffee and you can make a brew on here. This just lifts out 
and you can use it to get you out of a sticky situation or whatever maybe you've got a spare bit of wood there but in here as i say is all like silicone guns wipes oils and various other bits and bobs but this was a fantastic idea instead of having a table that drops out on the back of the door to have it just there because i've got this i may as well use it and that is a very recent upgrade so before we talk about the gar garage area let's talk about all the insides of the doors all the doors i've lined with ply and carpet and that's because carpet and wood will hold heat a lot longer than metal and you can see just here at the top of your screen i've got access to my fridge on this side i'm not going to open it but there you go i can open it i'm not going to open it because my computer's just charging on top of it and i don't want it to slide off but let's get on to the garage area so my garage area is under where the back seat should be and what i store in here is i've got a couple of plastic boxes just with emergency items really i've got some mres I've got some cordage and things in the one in the back. I'm not going to get out some masking tape and some very rarely used items that I could probably take out now. And in here, I've got a couple of MREs and again, another couple of bits that are there just in case of emergency that I don't need access to all the time. But what else is under here is I keep all my pots and pans, stuff I've used on um, open fires before now and I've got charcoal on them. So I don't want them dirty in my bedding or dirty in my bed in the back. And also the diesel heater and the leisure battery are stored on the other side and uh, if i just bring you in for a quick close-up here that's one of the ducts for my diesel heater it's got a total of four one that comes out on the driver's side one that comes out on the passenger side the one you saw in the back before that comes out through the floor and it's got one that comes straight out the front and heats up the cab area because these things have really bad heaters and they get really cold in the winter so just that option of being able to turn on your diesel heater and get into a warm car in the morning when you're on your way to work is highly recommended. So let's just finish up at the front of the vehicle. So the front of the vehicle is usually where I store all my stuff when I'm camping. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, I have been camping for five days, so it's a bit of a mess in the front. Uh, dirty washing. I've got some knives and some stuff that I'm going to make further videos on while I'm out. And I've also borrowed my friend's uh, external battery pack, uh, mainly because my one let me down four days before I was meant to come away. Uh, but more on that in a separate video and more on power solutions in a separate video because that's going to be a whole rant and me moaning. Uh, over on the driver's seat, I have brought spare clothes, underpants, trousers, socks and, and, and such. So, so just, just my bug out bag or, or a Bergen, I usually store on the driver's seat. But as I say, when I get parked up, this area is usually just a mess and storage. <sighs> so before I end the video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my theory and why I built the vehicle like this. So yes, it's an overland vehicle, but I wanted the option that if I park on the outskirts of a wood, I can just take some stuff in a Bergen into the woods and camp. So I never wanted fixed water supplies, fixed cooking facilities like a, like a sink or, or a fixed induction hub. I never wanted to go down that route. I wanted everything packable into a pack and I'd be able to move. I mean, at the end of the day, it is a bug out vehicle, yes. So if you come to the end of the road, if you have a mechanical failure or you, you, you run out of diesel, I wanted to still have options to pack my stuff into a Bergen to move and not stay stationary with the vehicle. That's always been my plan. Now, there are a couple of exceptions to that, obviously. I'm not going to be carrying a 120 watt uh, leisure battery and I'm not going to be carrying my fridge. So there are some exceptions to that rule. That's more for glamping. But uh, yeah, those were my ideas. Uh, I never designed the vehicle to sit inside it. It was just a, it was just a bedroom. Um, this counter that the camera's actually sat on now was an afterthought. And the reason I put that in was because I'm away camping for such a long period of, well, long for me, period of time, I wanted somewhere where I could edit my videos on the fly. In fact, this video you're watching right now will be edited tonight on my laptop, hence I've brought it, in the vehicle, out of the elements, with the diesel heater on. So yes, there are some exceptions. There are some luxuries in the vehicle and some things I can't carry on. 
but the essentials to survive, my sleeping bag, uh, my sleeping mat, my cooking facilities, I've got ways of making fire on the vehicle, I can just put in a Bergen and move. And that was the theory behind this build. Not gonna really apply to everybody, and it's not really gonna appeal to everybody, but this is why I've gone down the route I've gone. Anyway guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's not too long. I'm hoping it's, uh, it's not exceeded 10 minutes. And uh, yeah, there will be more videos on a few little things you've seen in this video coming up very, very shortly. So keep your eyes open for them. And until I speak to you next time, you all stay safe.